Um, so my first word for you is family. Family. I don't know. It just makes me think about same-sex couples and stuff now. Because it gives me the shits that... So many people just that, that I know that say, like, that I have really good family lives and they're like, no, I don't think two men or two women should raise a child because they're... You know, it's not equal. So I'm like, but heaps of people have children and then are not with their partner or hate them or whatever. I just think it's stupid. I think it should be allowed because yeah, I've met like heaps of people that have like two, or like their parents have gotten divorced and they have two. You know, like their dad or their mum is now gay and they and they have like they're fucking great. <laughs> it's stupid, you know. Friends. Friends. Friends are good. <laughs> um, I think it's really important to have a friend group that you're properly comfortable with. You know, like all through school I wasn't particularly comfortable with my friend group. They were my friends, but not really. And I was sort of constantly trying to fit myself into what they were okay with me fit being. So, And I think once I moved from Kuna, I got a friend group that was really... Um, not really close but just really accepting and always just really happy for me to be eccentric and neurotic like I actually am, I don't have to hide that anymore so I don't know, I always think if you're not happy with your friend group, just change it because <laughs> it's not worth it hmm. right. what about study? study, I love study you know how much I love study <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, I always get the shits with people at uni, especially in arts, that they don't do the readings or just don't participate in class. Like, even the occasional time which I, when I haven't done the reading, I'm still able to talk about something because it's just like an acquired knowledge that you have, you know. People that do arts, that don't, or that just do arts because they don't want to get a job yet or don't want to, or just want to have a degree, need to die. That's my theory of study. Because <laughs> you're wasting everything and you're ruining it for the rest of us that actually want to contribute. Money. Money. I kind of love and hate money. I don't have much money, so it's fine because I'm used to being really poor and eating rice and beans for most meals. But. But I actually really like that. I find I'm actually really suited to a really poor diet because. Well, not poor, as in. Bad quality, but just poor and you know, cheap. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, like, I really like having things, but then very often when I get things, I'm just like, oh, I don't really need that. I could be, you know, doing something else. I don't know. Yeah, I like, like uh, yeah, I like money, but I don't really care that I don't have it. That's my favorite money. Mm -hmm. I like being bohemian. <laughs> um... <laughs> Religion. <sighs> okay, where do I start? <laughs> Religion is like a big dick. I don't care if you have it, but don't wave it around and don't shove it down my children's throats. And <sighs> yeah, I suppose it's. I mostly have problems with Christianity and mo mainly Catholicism, but that's because I grew up in a Western country. I think, like, generally I have problems with just the organisation of religion. I'm quite happy if someone wants to, you know, I, I, it's, it's quite a human need, I think, to have some sort of higher motive for doing the things that you do. But I'm also a positive nihilist, as far as Nietzsche's concerned. I'm a uber munched or something like super he calls positive nihilist superman because <laughs> it's just like no we know that there's nothing but we're co totally okay about that <laughs> so when i find religion saying that you know there's god and or there's many gods and well there's possibly a god i'm just like Shh, who cares if he's if he's a god then if there is a god then he's clearly unjust or you know something so i don't really want to have anything to do with him even if there is one. And I don't, I'm pretty sure there's not. <laughs> when you look back on most religions and how they got started, just like, yeah, you started as a business. <laughs> mm. 
And what about um, the role that religion, any role that religion has played throughout your life? Uh, religion hasn't really been a big one for me. Like I was baptised Anglican, but I whinged my way out of Sunday school when I was about five, I think, or like pretty much, I only have like sort of one very vague memory, so I'm pretty sure I was young. And then I also whinged myself out of doing religion studies by year five, I think, or year six, I don't know, whenever, somewhere time around that. So yeah, I was always, even though I wasn't, a, you know, devout atheist until, you know, sort of mid-twenties, I... I knew that it was bullshit from an early age, you know what I mean? I just like, I, I don't know. I know pr plenty of people that are really like good people that are also Christians, but they don't particularly consider themselves devout. They don't go to church and stuff. They just prefer to look at the world in this way, which yeah. I is totally fine. Like yeah. that sort of stuff is fine. But if, um, if you're going to start judging people based on how you think that other people should live like that's so stupid it's like you know I don't know like getting the shits at someone feeding a donut when you're on a diet just mm. like shh get over it <laughs> you know if you want to think that we're going to hell then I don't give a shit <laughs> you know, there's fun people in hell as far as I'm concerned <laughs> people in, he in heaven are like Gandhi and someone else all the cool people all the cool people go to hell yeah I would suppose that if the actual official rules of getting into heaven are legit, there probably wouldn't be many people there at all. Yeah. I don't even know if Gandhi would make it. <laughs> yeah. Some, there's some complicated shit in yeah. Gandhi's history. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, it's, it's like people, people like Mother Teresa that people would absolutely swear would be there. It's like she had some serious fucked up issues. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's she's a, up there. There's a great joke on Sopranos um, that... Oh, I can't remember who tells it. I think it's Junior. But he said he's like uh, yeah, a Jewish accountant and um, a Catholic saint die at the same time, and they both go to heaven. And what's the main that the main guy that Saint Paul or someone that like Saint you know, Michael? Whoever. He's whoever's at the gates <laughs> being the maitre d'. The big guy. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, big, the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> the big guy upstairs. He um he puts um the saint in like this little hovel thing and the Jewish accountant in this big mansion and the saint's like you know come on guys like I'm a saint why why don't I get a big mansion and he's like you we've got so many saints up here this is our first Jewish accountant shut up how rude we're in the middle of something. Yeah, don't you know I'm filming a mother? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so rad. Pins and needles, pins and needles, pins and needles. Yeah, this is why I've got a bad back, you see, because I'm constantly <laughs> sitting. Because you sit bad. <sighs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. I can barely pick up anything. Let's <laughs> <laughs> try this hand. Yeah. Wow, yeah, feel, you know, <laughs> that one is tall. <laughs> yeah. <It's> awesome. Oh. <laughs> I was made for porn. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was bigger than this. <laughs> Food. Food? Well, coming to my poor rant before. <laughs> but I like, yeah, I like good food, but I'm very used to living on brown rice and beans. Sleep, what's in my cupboard? What's in my cupboard at the moment? Brown rice, beans. Tins of pineapple, then my little treats. Um, <laughs> baked beans. Oh yeah, I've got like normal beans and then baked beans, just to spice things up a little bit. I got porridge. I got cornflakes. I got coffee. I got tea. I got Scooby snacks. Yeah, that's about it. I got one pack of two minute noodles <laughs> in there at the moment. I don't know why I haven't eaten that. But yeah, I'm really basic. <laughs> and I think it's food is often a big problem with me because I'm not... Because um, when I'm working, if I have to get up and break my mode and start cooking stuff, it just gives me the shits. So I just... If I don't have something I can just grab out of the fridge and eat right away, I'll just drink coffee until I'm actually having a break. So this is why I'm 
so skinny because I actually do eat a fair amount of shit generally because Nick buys it for me mm. like a bastard <laughs> takes me out to dinner also oh, jeez oh. why are you even with the it? nerve the <laughs> fucking nerve ruining my diet um yeah so that's why I'm like that because I just drink coffee and it just kills my appetite and makes me heaps productive I'm just like oh my god what's gonna be next doing the work and then I'm like yeah I'm being so productive. I don't want to stop and eat now. I've got to keep on doing more. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a bad cycle. <laughs> when you realise, I haven't eaten in three days. I and I'm like, oh, and something. then I wake up the next morning, I'm like, oh, God, why well, I'm in pain. And I was like, oh, yeah, because I haven't eaten anything yesterday. My stomach is probably about that small. Props. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not healthy. I think. <laughs> pets. Pets. I love my pets. I have a little yabby at the moment. Have you met Michelle? No. She's my baby. She's my my little crustacean. And I talk to her in all sorts of weird accents. She comes over, she's like scuttling along the side of the tank, looking for stuff, and she's like, oh, Michelle, what are you doing? You're a little crustacean. And she gets all my love transposed from what I'd normally be giving to dogs to my little yabby, who I can't actually pet. But she gets along beside the tank and Eva kisses on her belly. <laughs> I don't think she knows, but she likes <laughs> But I think it's very important to have pets. For kids especially. So I'd learn to, like, not get along with other things, but learn what other things don't like and stuff, you know what I mean? I was reading a really cute story actually once. Um, the guy... Uh, he's Augustine Burroughs' brother. So Augustine Burroughs is the guy that wrote Running With Scissors, I think. Um, and it's his brother, and he wrote a memoirs. And he's actually the guy that designed all the um, the flaming guitars and stuff for Kiss. But he has Asperger's. And when he started preschool, he had no idea how to interact with other kids. And, but he had a dog, and he knew that the dog liked being patted. So he was patting one of the other kids, and so the other kid hit him. And so then he was trying to pat him with a stick from afar away so he wouldn't get hit. I was like, oh, you're so cute. <laughs> but, but that's nice, you know, like, you know, like, you know, dogs like affection. And it would, does make sense that people like affection too. It's just maybe, you know, not different people sort of you kind of just affection met. from yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I always think that's, I uh, love that story. So cute. Perfect. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep. Well, hmm. I take sleeping tablets nightly. I don't know if you know that actually. Yeah, no, well, I do. I was diagnosed with insomnia like in 2007, I think. 2007, yeah, sounds right. Um, and yeah, now I have to take sleeping tablets nightly because all through pretty much from when I was 15 to after the HSC, I was getting two hours of sleep a day at the most and for that reason I was incredibly depressed and anxious and all sorts of bad things so yeah now I have to take sleeping tablets nightly but um yeah so I always understand when someone's like oh my god I'm so tired I haven't slept I'm just like I'm sort of I understand some like yeah I know how that is but at the same time I'm just like harden up <laughs> I've got you have no idea yeah you have no idea what I feel like to be tired because I was a zombie most of the time you know books Ooh, books. Where do we start with books? I love books. The thing that I'm, that's pissing me off about books lately is fucking bookstores. They kill me. Like, book depository is fine because I can just search for whatever I want and it comes up. But mm. bookstores, like, all books for less and stuff, like, they're not real bookstores. Like, they're the pulp bookstores. And even when you go to Unleashed or something, or, or Kinnikinne is in a league of its own. That's, that's, that's fine. <laughs> but um, even when I go to Unleashed in like Miranda or somewhere, I look in the literature section and it's got like, like Maeve Binchy or some bullshit. I'm just like, that's not literature. Really? Really? <laughs> like, that's not even contemporary literature. That's just, that's, no. Like, <laughs> no. It's like putting Bryce Courtney in literature. It's like, mm. He's not though. Have yeah. you read literature? It's not that. <laughs> And just the, the amount of absurd celebrities that keep bringing out biographies. Like, you know, Paris Hilton or Kim Kardashian, like, neo-Paris Hilton. I was just like, oh, 
I don't care. Like, my first favourite book, book, like, you know, with no pictures, was, I think... It, That's very elitist of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it was called uh, Vanilla Fudge or something like that. It was about a cocker spaniel. And he had, um, you know, it was one of those books that, you know, both, like, there's two different girls and they both think that they are in the dog and they both lose him at consecutive times and then he ends up with the other one. And they finally meet and they're like, that's my dog! And he's like, no, but he has a love heart mark under his ears. This is how we can tell. And that's all lovely. That was my first book that I read that I really loved that I got from Scholastic Book Club. Remember that? Mm -hmm. I love Scholastic. Um, yeah, and I suppose, I don't know, but I really didn't get into reading literature and stuff until... Till I started uni, I guess. I always read the only literature I'd had, so anything to do with it was Jane Austen, and that sufficiently killed literature enough for me, because I hate Jane Austen. But I know, I know, we differ on that. That's uh, so. Right. I won't, you know. I'll let you. I won't push buttons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the last three years, not including not including this one, I've read almost three hundred books. So most of my reading has actually been the last since I started uni because before that I sort of read like you know like shitty fantasy and stuff which I enjoyed but now I'm just like oh but there's literature yeah um, dating <laughs> dating yeah I don't know well <laughs> yeah, there you go I don't understand dating well I don't it's not so much that I understand dating it's that I don't understand people generally luckily I have found someone that also doesn't understand people and we're therefore really good together but before that, I was just, I don't know. I don't understand the dating thing. I don't want to do it. I think the most, the biggest thing for me was that if I had a choice to spend time with this person or myself, I would rather spend time with myself. And this is what all past boyfriends have had trouble with me because I'm just like, no, 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 just go away. <laughs> I will have sex with you later. Um, or now, as long as you go away after. <laughs> I don't care. But, yeah, with Nick it's more like, like, oh, you're here. You know about you. You're lovely. <laughs> um, yeah, but generally I don't understand dating. Generally I'm quite okay to just be with myself, so I don't feel the need to date. Or I don't feel... And I also don't look... I also don't find many people attractive on first appearances. I need to get to know them. And then only if they are a certain level of intelligence will I find them attractive. So I often don't register that people are good looking or not on first meeting them. So I don't know if I often want to date anybody. So they tend to be a bit of a what's it called? Safe, sapiosexual. Yeah. Yeah. I'm big old sapiosexual, which yeah. I'm totally fine with. <laughs> yeah. Intelligence is sexy. Oh, it's so sexy. I just want to lick people's brains. <laughs> <laughs> speed. Speed. Whether it's like the speed of life or speed as a drug. Or yeah, speed, so speed just makes you think Speed of as the way that life goes um, too quickly. Anything to do with speed. Hmm. Then I'll, I'll let you know from here the topics are getting a little more abstract and a little more deep okay. and significant rather than food or yep. <laughs> whatever. Okay. Speed. Speed. I suppose it just makes me think of efficiency, because I'm a big one for efficiency, and if people get in my way, I get really shitty. I'm just like, even like, like Nick's takes, sort of takes a while to hurry up about stuff, and I don't think he realises that I'm in a rush, but I'm just like, come on, come on, come on, get up, get up, I'm gonna make the bed, <laughs> I'm just like, come on, you gotta do this, because otherwise, you're making tasks, like, tasks that take 10 minutes or a lot, take like 3 hours, because you won't get out of the way. Um, so yeah, as far as that's concerned, I'm sort of, I prefer to be on the go rather than taking a lot of time, but, I don't know, speed of life, I don't think it's going that quickly, not, not mine, I suppose it's because I've been, you know, in student life for so long, I just start thinking of things in terms of years and semesters rather than you know, just when the next thing is, so, 
Yeah, no, I'm pretty good with the speed of light. And I'm stoned a lot of the time, so everything slows down <laughs> quite a lot then. It's fine. But then I'm, you know, take other drugs and they pat, pat, go, pat, 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 pat. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so. Speed. Yeah, I don't know. I'm okay with speed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like speed. I prefer speed to slow. Legal. Legal. Well. <laughs> Weed drugs, like not heroin and meth and stuff like that, like they're legitimately bad drugs. They're hugely addictive. But things like pot and like hallucinogens um, and stuff like like MDMA and stuff that just play the serotonin, I don't really see what the problem is with that. You know what I mean? Like when when I go to Blues Fest and music festivals like that, if I go to a music festival in Sydney, they're just like dogs everywhere, everyone's out to enforce everything, but they don't give a shit about how much you drink inside. Mm. I just sort of see, it's just like, it's just sort of infuriating to me because drinking is actually one of the drugs that most deaths are caused by, you know, <laughs> but it's okay because it's legal. But I, I don't particularly like drinking. As far as drugs go, drinking is the least, my least favorite one apart from nicotine, which says nothing. Um, so, yeah, I guess with stuff like that, weed and psychedelics and stuff, then it's making people who would normally be law-abiding into criminals because you're not making it legal. Death. Death. Well, as I said before, I'm positive miles. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm actually completely okay with death, hey? I always get in this conversation with William. Because he's, like, a really negative nihilist. He's just so consumed by the fact that there's nothing after life. Um, whereas I'm just like, there's nothing after life. Woo! <laughs> um, so, so it's the difference between there's nothing after life, how shit is that? Yeah. Or and, there's nothing after life, and that's okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, and so Will and I are on completely other ends of the spectrum as far as nihilism goes. But, um... Yeah, I don't know, I suppose, and also live, growing up in the country, you sort of get this weird view of death because, you know, because you are so involved with a lot of people in the community and stuff like that, so I think, yeah, as far as, I'm, I'm, I'm quite okay with death, I guess, like, it's, it's the only constant, so you may as well, you know, why are you scared of the only constant and not scared of all the variables that, you know. Um, but yeah, so I've actually got my final wishes. Actually, this would be good because I haven't made a will, so I can just put it on here. Video from cams. And <laughs> my what I want to be done with my body after death is I know that there's weird ways of having to dispose of bodies in Australia, so it might not be actually doable. But I want my skin made into wallets and bags and sold. One one bag has to go to will. And then, and then the rest of my body either to be made into um, meat or made or made uh, sorry or put on top of like a cliff thing and let just stuff eat me mm-hmm. and then I could just be part of the thing again. I think that's a very good way to die. And there's no you know no land being taken up by plots and shit. Yeah. So yeah. No, I definitely don't want to be buried. Yeah. Um, my current idea is that um, I want to be completely taken apart from my organs to be donated. Mm, yeah. Like I want like you know, take everything that you want from this. Yeah. This is all available. Yeah. Um and then uh, cremated and I want to be put in one of those um the bio urns mm. that grow a tree from them and like it's like yeah the, so you're like kind of part of a bit of nature and yes. Yeah, yeah well, um, so it's like that way that yeah well. I'm not taking up any more room than the roots of a tree. Yeah. Um, as well the fact that I'm a part of something. And you can have a tree become on beautiful. Top of you and then it's like the only the only system. real thing that I want to make sure of is that it doesn't become any kind of fruit tree. Because <laughs> so I don't want people to eat something that's come out yeah, of my house. Yeah, and it's like a nice it's like that's a bit yeah, and yeah. yeah. But yeah, like like yeah, any kind of um non fruit bearing tree mm. I think that would be a beautiful thing to be able to have. So then yeah. that, like I- even if that's even if it doesn't end up like on my home property or anything mm. like that if it's in some park or something like that, I think that'd be really good yeah I can contribute to the beauty of nature and shit yeah yeah I don't like the the buried thing I just sort of seem it's 
don't know. It's just sort of pointless. It's just mm. like taking up a whole lot of room. You can, you know, your family, if they want a place to go, you know, like to see your tombstone and stuff, just put the tombstone there. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know you're that's, dead. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what I think every time I go to see mum. Yeah. It's like I'm there. I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm only doing this because of the obligation that mm. I feel that I have to come and see you every now and then. It's yeah. like, it's not like I actually feel that and she's it's not there. Like, and it's not like when she's you, yeah. six feet under me and not alive. Yeah, like, and no, it's not like... You're well, hopefully not, not alive. It's not like if you didn't... <laughs> you know, and it's not like... So uh, nice. <laughs> it's not like even if, like, if that wasn't there... It's not like you would have no place to grieve for your mother. Exactly, you know, so. and I do that every day. Yeah, like like if I, like I look at her photo and I feel closer to her than I do yeah. when I'm six feet above her body. Like, yeah, because her body isn't her. Right? Yeah, um, she's in here. Yeah, so I yeah I don't see and so many like, especially in Kuna, like there's so many plots and stuff that like none of their family lives in Kuna anymore. Yeah. Like, they're just literally just sitting It's just there. wasted ground, yeah. Yeah, and, I don't know, I can't see the point of wanting why you would want your body to be whole. Even when, like, even with Christian stuff, it's like, you're completely aware that your body, that your spirit leaves the body. So yeah. we give a shit about the body. Use it for other stuff. Like, yeah. what was me? Anyway. And then on a more positive note, life. Life. Um, no, life's shit, eh? <laughs> 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 I don't know. I like life. Life is cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. You often get that feeling that you're wasting life. I hate that YOLO shit. Oh my god, YOLO. I keep saying stuff like YOLO about stuff that's not really anything to do with YOLO. It's just like, you know, pay double more rent, YOLO. <laughs> just, actually, I was really wanted to start using that for things that, like, it actually applies to. Like, you know, wear your safety glasses while welding. YOLO. YOLO. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> like, have, you, have you heard the Lonely Island YOLO? No. Yeah, the Lonely Island just released a, oh a, a song called YOLO. Um, but the entire song is made up of things that are legitimately yeah. things that, like, you know, like wear my safety helmet because you won't live once. Yeah. So, um, and then and then at the end the, they, they have Y-O-L-O and it comes up with um, something, I can't remember what, you ought to look out or something like that. <laughs> Instead of you only live once, you're, you ought to look out. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's very funny. But it's, yeah, it draws attention to the whole, yeah. the actual why you only live once is yeah. 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 not, not, yeah, yeah. stupid Swag yellow. Oh, swag hashtag yellow. Oh my god, it kills me. <laughs> I just say it about stupid stuff now. Just like, you no, know, just I just say it after every sentence. Just like gonna make Made a cup coffee. Tea. Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yellow. <laughs> but it's so it's just it's so addictive to say it because it's you know it's such a neat nice little punchline. But when I hear people actually saying it, I'm just like, kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> just die. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I don't really have much to say about life. I guess it's just one of those things that's happening while I'm on my iPhone. Not that I have an iPhone. I have a smartphone. But that's deep. I know, right? Life. It's what's happening while you're on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's happening around you. Um, yeah. I often, I often feel like, especially with reading and stuff, that I should actually be going out and having experiences. But I actually really enjoy reading. Like, you know, who says I have to go out and have experiences? Like, yes, it's a good idea, but if I want to read, it's my life. Why don't I just read? So I get, I get the shits with that sort of stuff. That's like, oh, my God, you're so many of Nick's friends, particularly like my housemate Nick, so many of his friends come around. They're like, oh, what are you doing? Like, oh, I'm just working. I'm like, you're always working. Oh, my God. I'm just like, give yeah, it a like working. Hmm. I'm not working like I'm not stressed out of it. I'm just sorry if you're you're fucking work enjoying shit. it. Just, just <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> like studying. Yellow. Um, <laughs> so Yeah. <laughs> That's all for now. This has been Holly. I've been Penny. Bye. Bye! <laughs>